I am TJ Kopcha, and I have a PhD in Educational Technology, and I'm currently working at the University of Georgia in the Learning Design and Technology program. Yeah, the, the big question that I've always been interested in is um, what happens when you take computers or other technological devices and you put them in the hands of young children so that they can explore and, and learn their, their subject matter a little bit differently or maybe go a little bit more deeply into that subject matter. I was a mathematics teacher okay. in uh, high school and middle school for five years and during that time I used a lot of technology to, uh, to teach honors classes and some other classes but in particular um, this was in the 90s we were still using programs like Logo and Geometer Sketchpad to really reinforce the idea of geometric construction mm -hmm. and the relationship among the angles and sides and things like that in, in geometric shapes and figures and that was really fascinating to me the, the way that that got at a particular concept that had been taught sort of the same way over and over again this was a, a whole new way of seeing that concept or those concepts um, and all because of a device a computer and now here we are 14 years later and we've got handheld devices that allow us to do what we needed big desktop computers to do when I was teaching and uh, it still just it fascinates me that students and children have this opportunity to enter into really new virtual worlds in order to to look at concepts and to really solidify concepts and relationships within subject matter like geometry or mathematics so um, so my big question really stems from that that experience and even myself as a, a young kid just playing with computers and and realizing what potential they had to to take you someplace new right right at your fingertips. And, and I, I like that about them and, and I want to see that, I want to study that as a researcher who's in educational technology. A study like the one where uh, I look at the barriers to technology integration and in particular how teachers implement technology. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's really where the, the link is. Um, the answer to that question is that these devices have tremendous potential to allow children to explore and, and to do it freely, to, to think of a question, explore the question, test a, a, a hypothesis that they have, like if it's geometry, they might, they might think, well, I think when I make the angle like this, the side reflects that. Go ahead and test that. This device will let you do it, and there's no real punishment or um, or something associated with getting a wrong answer. You just keep reformulating your hypothesis until you start to really get a robustness about that concept that you're exploring. And so what I've come to find in my experience in seeing that potential that children can have and then looking at the way teachers implement that technology, there's often a barrier or a gap in between those two. So the way a teacher goes about setting up an environment with technology plays a huge role in whether or not a student or a child can actually have that kind of an experience. Mm. And more often than not, you'll see teachers applying more of a lecture style model of a classroom and teaching to technology instead of this idea of exploring a concept and using technologies that allow children to actually do the work of thinking up a hypothesis, testing it, and then reformulating their ideas about that concept. And so that led me to want to study, well, what is it about teachers that, that would bring them to the point where they can have this kind of an environment? Mm -hmm. What are the complexities involved when a teacher may never have used technology or may have had limited experience integrating technology? How do you move them from there to a point where you have this more free and open environment for children to explore and, and, and study what they, want to, what they want to look at? You know, I, I'm interested in what happens when children get a, a mobile device in their hands or some kind of a, a computing device and they have the software and the capability to do things like explore and discover and create a hypothesis, think to themselves, I wonder what happens if, and then actually be able to test that hypothesis out. And so 
in my experience, not just as a teacher for five years, but then in graduate school and working with teachers from more of a research point of view or more of a professional development point of view over time, what I found is that there is a significant gap between this vision I have for the way technology is going to be used in the classroom and the realities of the classroom. And, and one of those harsh realities is that this is there is a, an environment that needs to be created for children to thrive when they're exploring and discovering because there's a lot of management issues and there's a lot of uh, ahead of time work that has to be done and a lot of things to be thought through on the teacher's part and that isn't something that would come naturally to a lot of teachers and so that that sort of led me down a path of figuring out how do we bring teachers to a point where they're creating these environments and they're more comfortable with those environments and um, it, be it becomes more natural for them to think about the questions and the situations ahead of time that might arise in an environment where these things are happening. Interested in the environment, I'm noticing it's not happening, and so then I started looking for problems. Where was there, um, where does the environment and the behavior of the teacher lead away from what I had envisioned for technology versus where does it start leading towards it and where does it support it? And so I just started by cataloging those, and that in itself is a research, you know, a, a form of research. How many times are we seeing um, activities that support a more open-ended environment, and why are we seeing activities that shut down the open-endedness and are very teacher-directed? Mm -hmm. So the quantifying is another thing that I think helps. Thinking about where can I start coming up with and documenting the number of times something is occurring, and that thing helps helps understand my problem a little bit more deeply. I personally enjoyed having a computer growing up because it allowed me to explore things in this manner, to, to come up with a, an idea like, hey, I wonder what happens if, and then see the results of playing with that um, to form a hypothesis, a working theory about something, mm -hmm. and then test that. And so I want to see that for children when they're using devices. And really, what I was finding is as I went into classrooms, I saw more of a barrier to that based on what the teacher had conceptualized as uh, effective teaching with technology. Mm -hmm. And so that, that led me down the path of trying to figure out mm, how is it, um, how is it teachers make a jump from a lecture style of teaching or kids sitting in rows listening to having the freedom to come up with an idea, test the idea, reframe their thinking about that idea. How do you support all of that and what tools and strategies do teachers need that they might not have right now to do that? Look for problems. Look for, look for areas where if you have a vision for how something should be and it's not happening that way, that's your indicator. Well, why? How can I go and start collecting data that indicates to me why there's a problem there? So if I have this vision for, for kids using technology, and when I go into classrooms, I'm, I'm not seeing it, that made me start looking around and try and figure out what are the things that are getting in the way of that environment coming to reality. Be curious about the thing that you're really interested in, though, because I think that's when you can figure out what the questions are that haven't been asked, or what is the, where is there a way to look at this that somebody else may not have looked at it already? Mm -hmm. If it's not something you're interested in, you're going to stop at the first idea that you have. But if you're really interested, you're going to keep thinking about, is this really the way I want to look at it? Is this really the thing I think is in the way? How can I capture that? How can I express that to other people? How can I communicate this when I walk away from where I am and show it to someone else? so that they're able to understand what I was thinking, what I found, and what it means.